I am very honored today to have Stephen Cohn, one of the top experts on whistleblower protections. He is the founder of National Whistleblower Center, Cohn Cohn and Calapinto, a law firm in Washington, D.C., and he has written the definitive books on whistleblowing. In fact, he has one coming out uh, soon, his fifth. He's written numerous articles and appeared before Congress several times. And we are just delighted to have him on the show today, mainly because we have something that's so critically important that we have to get everybody on board. Uh, today, we are going to be like Paul Revere. We're going to sound the alarm. Whistleblowers know they have to fight for everything. And we just had International Anti-Corruption Day on December 9th. On December 7th, the Senate voted 100 to nothing to pass the Anti-Money Laundering Whistleblower Improvement Act, known as AML, AML. It's a bill that extends Dodd-Frank style whistleblower rights to individuals reporting money laundering. And we all know how critical that is. It also reports a, a sanctions violations, but we have a major roadblock for this critical bill for whistleblowers. And Steve is gonna tell us about it and explain how critical it is and how one person can hold this up, which I don't understand, Stephen. Clue us in on how that's possible on such a critical bill. Well, thank you, Jane. So this bill will empower whistleblowers for the first time to report money laundering, which is gigantic major corruption, and obtain rewards exactly like what happens in Dodd-Frank, which is an incredibly successful program. If the whistleblower's information is good, solid, and leads to a successful prosecution, that whistleblower can get compensated. And that's the critical issue. But there's something else going on here. For the first time ever, a whistleblower who reports violations of sanctions rules will be fully covered under the same protections. This is being pushed by the war against Ukraine. This bill will target every Russian oligarch, every Russian corrupt official, and every person across the world that is gonna, that's violating sanctions to give money to the Russians, to bring in arms to the Russians. This is a, we are empowering whistleblowers to support the Ukrainian people in their time of need. And we know how many billions has been laundered because I also represent a Mr. Howard Wilkinson and in one case out of the Donsky Bank, it has was admitted by the bank that 240 billion was laundered from Russia and former Soviet republics to New York City banks, 240 billion, including Putin's relatives and the FSB, which is their secret police. But there's no whistleblower law. All that money sitting in Western banks and no one can report it. This law will unleash whistleblowers to hold Russia accountable, to stop sanctions violations, and in long term, target money laundering that is done by the drug pushers, the bribe takers, the tax evaders. So this is a major, one of the, maybe the most important anti-corruption law in the last 50 years for whistleblowers, maybe ever, because of what it's targeting. It's targeting the worst. So here's where we're at. 
the United States Senate in the lame duck session with so many other priorities took the time to unanimously endorse this bill. They understand how critical it is right now in the war against Russia or the war in Ukraine that Russia's fighting and to, and to capture those assets and to stop the sanctions busting. They understood it 100 to nothing. Every Democrat, every Republican. The That's House, amazing, amazing. House, yeah, the House Financial Services Committee, which has the actual jurisdiction in the House of Representatives, unanimously endorsed the bill. Every Democrat, every Republican. And they have sent it up to the floor of the House of Representatives for a vote. And it's a procedure that lets them get it approved very quickly. So we can get this done literally in a day. Everything, every box has been checked, everyone's behind it. But in order to get this parliamentary procedure where you can get this fast vote, you need the sign, you need approvals by certain people. And there's the chair of the House Appropriations Committee, uh, 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 Representative Rosa. Deloro, you know, has mm -hmm. needs to essentially sign off on this. And once she does, we understand that the vote can be taken. So we are now urgently begging, pleading with every supporter of whistleblowers, with anyone concerned about the war in Ukraine, with anyone who wants to hold those Russian oligarchs accountable, for anyone who wants to find out where Putin has stashed his billions in the West, where the Russian secret police have moved their money into the West. If you want to know that, you need the insiders to come out. That's why this bill has such unanimous approval. But we're in a unique situation. The Congress is going to end in days. We're in a lame duck session. There are many priorities. The Senate has made this a priority. We can make it a priority in the House and have it signed into law before Congress dissolves. We are talking about days. We are talking about the normal legislative process does not work in this context. If it doesn't get passed now, we have to start all over in January. All bills are scratched. Everything starts again. And it took us two years to get here. We will be, it'll be devastating because we're so close. close. So Stephen what we are asking is that people contact Chair Delorio and just very simply say, support the two, there's two bills. There's the Senate version that has been unanimously approved in the Companion House. So we'll give you the both numbers. Yes, please do. The House version is HR7195. Repeat, HR7195. Okay. The Senate version is S3316. Repeat, S, 3316. The, be, there's no time. We don't want emails. There's no time. We need everyone to call the chair's office and let them know that this has to happen. We just can't wait. The Russian, the, the, the Ukrainian people can't wait. Every day we delay, they are given a better opportunity to hide the money. Every yeah. day we delay, people can bust sanctions and deliver to Russia the military equipment they need, the technology they need for profit. And that's why they do it. It's very profitable to bust sanctions when a country needs certain technologies and information. We need this right now. Every day it's delayed is probably costing lives. Yes. The phone number 
is very simple. 202 225 3661. Repeat. 202 225 3661. Now she has two other offices that you can also call. And all you need to do is go to the page for Whistleblower Network News right on the front page. All the information will be there. Additionally, information about this bill, what it's all about, all the links if you need more information. But what all you need to really do is pick up the phone. It ain't that hard. No one's asking you for money. They're asking you to save lives. They're asking you to get a law passed to hold these Russian oligarchs accountable. And all you need to do is pick up that phone, 202-225-3661. Say we have a message for the chair, a message for the chair. Please support HR 7195 and S3316 and please take whatever steps are necessary procedurally to ensure it is voted on during the lame duck session. Simple as that. Our representatives always need to hear from us and this is an absolutely critical time. And Jane, if I may, I just wanna say just one more thing and why I'm so passionate on this. Yes, please do. I represent a whistleblower from Europe and they have no rights over there. No. I mean, if there's ever gonna be rights, they'll come here. They just don't have them. And he worked in Estonia, a former Soviet Republic. And through that bank, they laundered 240 billion. So he worked in the bank and what he was able to learn was how the money flowed from Russia and former Soviet republics and how it got transferred to four big banks. You know some of them, uh, uh, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, the big banks in the United States. So that's what he knew and he blew the whistle on that and it was fully documented, 240 billion. And from his little view, he was able to determine that the Russian secret police and the Putin family were using this. I mean, it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. so, believe me, it's, it's a lot of money. A lot of money. But you know, we've been following this and we don't think one penny of that has been captured back. It's all illegal, it was all laundered. They hid the beneficial ownership. We need the banker, the people in New York, the real estate agents who know where the money is, the bankers, the financial services people who know where that money came from and where it went. We need them to expose it, to come forward. That's what this law will do. And if a penny of that money has been used to bust sanctions or to finance sanctions busting, we need to know that also. And we know that there are many people willing to blow the whistle. Yes. But if you're going to blow the whistle on Russians and their money, you not only need a law, but you need to know something else this law has. Anonymity, confidentiality, strong investigations. That's what you need to do it. This law has it. It has every feature of Dodd-Frank. We need it so, so badly. And once again, Chair... Delorio, 202-225-3661. Chair, please support and take every action necessary to have HR 7195 or S3316 voted on in the lame duck session. We are informed by our supporters on Capitol Hill that it will pass. But procedurally, we need to get it to the floor. And that is what's going on here. It's one of those very frustrating procedural things that happen in Congress. And we need to work through it. And we have literally days to do it. 
I want to end and conclude by this. Let's give the Ukrainian people a Christmas gift, an ability to empower whistleblowers to track down that money. But as important, let's give the Russian whistleblowers a place to go. Let's give the Russian anti-corruption anti activists who are in jail right now in Russia hope that there's going to be a way to police those billions in monies that have been transferred to the West. Let's get it done before Christmas. If we don't, we will lose it. And we'll take another two years for you to replay this video. And Stephen, let me ask you, in today's polarizing times, the fact that the Senate passed it 100 to nothing says something monumental. So what is the reason that there's a holdup when really everything about this bill should be, every good person should be raising their hand and saying, pass it, pass it, pass it. What is happening behind the curtain that there's a hold on this? Is it the banks? Okay, so it's just called procedure. And we're not gonna speculate on anything because our support has been unanimous and people who have been educated on what it means have been fully supportive. And as you said, when you go to 100 to nothing over in the Senate, but more as significant was the House Financial Services Committee, which is a large body of representatives from the House, every single one of them, co-sponsored every single one of them. So uh, it's, it's called procedure. And I know people can hear that like, oh, there's this tactic. Mm -hmm. No, how do you get something to vote? It's the lame duck session. Many special interests want their stuff covered. What makes this unique is there doesn't need to be a debate. That's why it can go super fast because no one has actually come out against it. And we know of no known opposition. And every time it has actually come up for a vote, it has been unanimous. So if they approve the procedure to have this put onto the floor, it could probably be approved in about 10 minutes. That's what makes this different from other bills that people are pushing. That's why we were able to get it through the Senate during the lame duck session, because once it was presented, any one senator could have stood up and said, put it back to committee, or I want to think about it. But they knew they had everybody. And essentially, it's the same in the House, because House Financial Services had the substantive jurisdiction. They were the ones to look over the bill and make sure everything was good. Everyone's on board. So the critical thing is just to get it to the floor and it won't take much time. It won't delay other bills because there is no real opposition, but it's a procedural thing that has to happen. And, and within the rules of uh, the house, this office, which was not involved in the bill. In other words, that there was House Financial Services learned everything about it, got all the details. They just have to check the box and say, let it go. And, and we were, and this is critical legislation. And again, if you are a whistleblower, a whistleblower supporter, or someone who understands the power of eliciting whistleblowers in this war, against Russia and their stupid and crazy and unethical and immoral invasion of Ukraine. We have to elicit every tool we can. And it's so understandable how the whistleblowers from the inside, and this yes. bill will cover them, whether they live in Russia, whether they live in Iran, whether they live in Ukraine, whether they're in Turkey, every whistleblower worldwide who has information about the violations of sanctions will be able to use this law. So this is a tool that won't cost the taxpayers a penny and will get the best information. So Stephen, are you like Paul Revere and you're telling us, raising the alarm, that if whistleblowers and their allies call this number 202-225-3661, 
and they can find it on uh, WIND, the Whistleblower Network News, if if they didn't write it down during this podcast. But are you telling us, like Paul Revere, that if we spring into action, we could get this taken off the hold that is on it now? Absolutely. This is a, this happens all the time. I was told that on the Senate side, there was a senator who was raising some questions, and they just went over to him and said, hey. This is going to help get whistleblowers to expose sanctions and sanctions busting in the war in Ukraine. So we really need to get it done. Lift it. Okay. It's a question of communication. It's a question of, of let people understand the importance. So we here in Washington, we can write articles, we can brief things. That's all fine with who reads it. We're, we're in a situation where the people, it's so important. And the phone calls, and you may think, well, what does it matter? Believe me, it matters on a bill like this. So the phone call, that's why we're saying forget emails, forget okay. letters. We don't have time. Just pick up the phone and it's easy. It's easy. And we will win. I was speaking to a supporter from the Senate staff, and this is exactly how they described it to me. They said, Steve, it's the end of the game. It's the fourth down. We are on the one yard line. We've done everything. Senate, House Financial Services, we've, we've addressed every single substantive issue in this bill. We have a compelling need. We are on the one yard line, one last play. Will we get it just over that line? That's how close we are. That's why your action right now is essential. It will work. We will get this through. We absolutely must give the Ukrainian people a gift before Christmas. I agree. Gift and of I, the whistleblowers. I, and we need to give those people in jail in Russia for having stood up against corruption a gift. They need to know that in the future, their Russian compatriots will have a way to expose it safely and anonymously. Stephen, I, I believe you, and I will be reaching out telephonically to Representative DeLauro and asking her to please take the hold off this. I implore my whistleblower sisters and brothers and all whistleblower allies to pick up the phone and call Representative Rose DeLauro and let her know how much is at stake and how much we want this done. And again, I just want to repeat the phone number 202-225-3661. And the bill is HR 71 nine five and s three three one six furthermore at whistleblower network news there's an article there are two other phone numbers you can use they're all there you can call all three numbers if you get a busy keep going they need to know that the american people care about whistleblowers that the american people know how important they are and this time of radical need. I mean, if one dollar of sanctioned goods gets into Russia because of the delay of this bill, I am, it's just unforgivable. Unforgivable. Yes. Yes. And I'm off right now, picking up my phone and I'm calling all three of those numbers. And uh, uh, my fellow whistleblowers, I'll be in touch with you and let's get this done because it is critically important. Thank you, Stephen Cohn. You're a hero to whistleblowers. Really appreciate your passion and your work. Let's not kid ourselves. The considerable work you have done on this. Uh, really appreciate it. And we are going to try to hand them a Christmas gift there in Ukraine. And I just want to say, I first off want to thank every whistleblower who is listening to this podcast. And thank you for the courage and the support and, the, and, the, and the, what you did. And I know you all understand what the 
whistleblowers on sanctions, with the whistleblowers in Russia or Ukraine, with the whistleblowers in Turkey, anyone who has information mm -hmm. on sanctions busting, you know what they're going through. You know the dilemmas they're facing. And for everyone listening to this who's successfully used Dodd-Frank or obtained a reward, you know how beneficial this can be. Uh, I take my hat off to what you have done, and I'm just humbly asking that you do it again. And for those who are not whistleblowers, but have been supportive of whistleblowers, you have been the backbone to get our legislation through time and again. False claims, Dodd-Frank, whichever laws have come, you're the backbone to get it done. We need you now. Yes, we Thank do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephen Cohn. Thank you, Jim.